Today, January 24th, our Take 5 with the Saint celebrates the life of Florence Lee Timoy, the first woman ordained a priest in the Anglican Communion, and she was ordained a lot before most people would probably guess in the 1940s during World War II in a time of great need among the people of Hong Kong and China where she was born and was exercising her ministry. So before we go any further, the scripture assigned for her feast day is Luke chapter 10 verses 1 through 9. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of Jesus in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Lee Timoy, as she was known at birth, the name which her father intentionally gave her, meaning much beloved daughter in Cantonese, was born in Hong Kong in 1907, raised with Christian influence in her household. She was baptized and upon her baptism adopted the first name of Florence in tribute to Florence Nightingale, whom she admired and particularly so as she entered into her ordained life later on. She attended and graduated from Union Theological College in Guangzhou or Canton in 1938 and a few years later was ordained by the Bishop of Hong Kong as a deaconess. But very shortly after that, Hong Kong and the rest of China fell to invasion by Japan. And at that point, she had been assigned to a church in Macau where she was offering ministry and doing traditional diaconal work, serving the needs of the poor, as well as serving at the altar. But because of the Japanese occupation, it was very difficult, in fact, almost impossible for priests to be able to get to the church in Macau. And so, in many ways, give credit to her bishop, Ronald Hall of Hong Kong, part of the Anglican Church of China that had been established a few generations before by Church of England missionaries. Ronald Hall, quote, said that God's work would reap better results if she, being Florence Lee Timoy, had the proper title of priest, and as such... On January 25th, 1944, which was also the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul, which you're going to hear about here tomorrow, she was ordained a priest and became the very first woman as such ordained in the Anglican Communion. And during the rest of World War II, she served faithfully offering the sacraments from the altar and faithfully serving her congregation. But when World War II ended and the distractions of war ceased, you might imagine that there was a bit of controversy about her status as a priest. It was done in large part in response to the text you just heard. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And her bishop decided that it was his duty to be able to ordain her to do the work of bringing the gospel of Christ to a very rich harvest that had very few people who could do it during the war. But she made the decision to not exercise her priesthood until it could be more widely accepted in the Anglican Communion. That being said, however, she was appointed as the rector of St. Barnabas Church in Hepu in 1947, where by Bishop Hall's instruction, she was continued to be called priest by his uh, orders as the bishop. 
Unfortunately, historical circumstances once again got in the way. As the communists came to power in China in 1949, she took a break from her work as a priest to do theological studies in Beijing for what was called the Three Self Movement, self-rule, self-support, and self-propagation, because during the communist period, and even still so today in China, the churches essentially had to rule themselves and take care of themselves, even though they were yoked to the wider Anglican communion. She also served later in Guangzhou again at the Cathedral of Our Savior, but in 1958, because of the Cultural Revolution in China, all churches were closed and Florence Lee Timoy, like most of the people in China at that time, was forced to go work first on a farm and then in a factory. And at some point during that, she was accused of treason against the communist government and underwent communist re-education. But after 16 years of that, finally in 1974, she was allowed to retire from her work in the factories. A few years later, 1979, churches were reopened, at least to an extent, in China, and she resumed her public ministry. In the early 1980s, she traveled to Canada and was allowed to visit family members who were living there, and to her great joy, she was licensed as a priest in the Diocese of Montreal and later in the Diocese of Toronto. Ultimately, she made the choice to settle in Canada, in Toronto in particular, and was able to exercise a ministry of priest in the Anglican Church of Canada until her death in 1992. There is a whole lot more to her story as well. I invite you to read that, but needless to say, it is a wonderful story of boundaries and barriers being broken of a woman who was joyously accepting her call to be the first female priest and yet in the service to the wider communion, despite her own personal feelings against it, she was able to back off from serving as a priest to avoid controversy for a bit, was able to resume her ministry, and then was able to continue ministering behind the scenes even when the communist government did not allow for churches to openly exist in China. Again, please read more about this remarkable woman and her gift to the church in China and to the wider Anglican communion. Join us tomorrow where Father Ashton will be giving you tomorrow's Saint of the Day, which is actually the conversion of Saint Paul the Apostle. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care.